good afternoon. It's a little after one on Tuesday. It's supposed to be raining today, but so far it hasn't. It's a beautiful day. I just wish it was a little drier. We'd keep planting corn, but anyway, we've run out of dry dirt, so we've stopped. When I started doing these anyway welcome back to the channel I forgot to say that nice to nice to hear from so many people that are viewing our channel while this pandemic is going on it's another form of entertainment I guess I I'm hoping that I'm teaching you a little bit about what goes on down here in Kent Lambton counties in agriculture there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and today we're going to see one of the one of the things that happens in uh, field crops that really nobody ever thinks about you know it just happens anyway I want to uh, do that today and uh, the other thing I want to put a plug in for today before we get going is uh, to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. And when you subscribe, you get a notice that we've, that uh, we've, <laughs> that Cameron's put another video up. Cameron, as you know, is my editor and grandson. Does a heck of a good job making these videos look kind of half presentable. And if you subscribe, you get noticed, so that way you know he's got one up. We tried to put one up once a week was our goal when we started. And uh, we've ended up doing a few more than that, mostly because I haven't got anything else to do. And Cameron's home from school, so I, if nothing else, he's learning more computer skills. And editing skills so anyway I'm on my way to the city of Tuberville to uh, there's an industry out here that's we know quite well because we use it every day we use it almost every day from October till May and this is uh, seed germination we send samples out here every day to get germed for uh, so we can tell you what our germination is on our seed. We don't just pick a number. It would be nice if we could pick a number sometimes, but it's all uh, third party done. So anyway, it's and I. I don't know. I think they do it blind. I don't think they know even whose sample it is. They're, we'll find that out. I'm just rolling up on this building. and You know, you could drive by. You'd never know. There is a little sign. You'd never know what was here. Okay, we're inside uh, Ken Agri Lab. Lori's our uh, receptionist, I guess. Eh? Hello. Yes. And Aaron's going to take us through and uh, show us how it's done. So each sample that comes in um, goes to Lori first. Nothing gets past these doors until there is a sticker on them with barcode. Each um, there's uh, tests and numbers will be applied to the sample label before it's brought into the system and into onto the floor for testing. So some tests that we do is um, moisture tests and so we have the moisture meter which we also have at uptown at the plant. So we run samples through here. Um, Does that do protein? There is a protein. This is the protein. Oh, okay. Right yep. Um, so there's a lot of editing I can do. So here's a sample. This is a large divider so some samples when they come in to get mixed in order to mix and divide it three times we run it through here um, it is custom made by Ed and Rob 
after is an Ottawa divider. Diane? Mm -hmm. yeah. Little Ottawa How are you, divider. Diane? <laughs> Diane's <laughs> over in the corner here, not saying a word. Yeah. Oh, this is where they keep me. <laughs> keep her hidden. She's yeah. doing a purity. So that's a whole other division. So anyway, the sample here, I'll show you how it gets done. So we have a sample here and we pour it into the top. And then and it gets split out. So sometimes for certain tests, you only need so much. So we just put it in there. We have something similar. When we get a sample off a truck, mm -hmm. first thing we do, we split it. Yes. Half of it goes in for moisture, protein, and dockage. Yeah. The other half goes for GMO test. Okay. So we can do two samples. Yeah. We can be doing two things at the same time. Well, ours is, is we mix and divide it all at the start, so then we know it's a representative sample before it gets any tests done within the lab. So that's that process. Mm -hmm. Next we can go to the study. So I've got a tray out here. Oh nice. So this is what it looks like. Let's, I'll show you how it, we do it first. Oh well, I was a little worried when you put those rubber <laughs> gloves on. So this is the uh, stickers I get applied to the sample bags when Lori uh, gets the test. So for here, this is a program that we've had designed. And so here we scan the germ number into the, and then the tray number. And then it's recorded on the, it saves in the, in the program. So it has it brings up the sheet so then we can keep track of it electronically and also on paper. Is this another Ed and Rob invention? No, oh, these I think we've had them designed and there's a company in the States that creates the trays. Oh, okay. And then you set it on top here and it drops down. All planted. All planted. So then they will get covered with sand. So we have a sand mixture here. Let's go around. So we, they all get a cover of sand. It's the same sand on the top and the bottom. And then we put them in these carts right here. And each crop has different um, times for how long it takes for them to germinate. Soybeans is seven days. So those will be sprouted next week to be able to read. So next Tuesday. And then they go from here when we're done to the germinators. So we have two germinators set at 25. And then here it's all carts. With the days on them. With the days on it. So, some that we will be supposed to be reading is uh, Wednesday. So, tomorrow this will be able to be read. So, we can show you some right on the table. So, they're all stayed in here for seven days. Mostly, these are mostly soybeans. And we have also these small germinators. They're all temperature controlled and they can do uh, like cereals. So here's like a pea sample. Oh, yeah. Because it's at a different temperature. What is it? Pea? A pea. Peas. Peas. Yep. And then. Here's some rutabaga. So you are not shy, you'll do any seed? Anything that's on the uh, grade table. So there's 20, um, there's a whole bunch of, so as long as it's on the grade table, 
and there's a testing for it, testing, we set it. That's where you make it, so it's in a different. We have a similar chamber as that, except we keep our beer in it. <laughs> That's not stored here. <laughs> So after seven days, it's like a these, these are treated samples. Yeah, these are treated samples. So when we, after seven days, you pull off the normals, and then when you sift through the sand, you'll find, I set them aside here. So this is after seven days, this is like a, a normal seedling, and these are some abnormal ones. So after we take, pull these all out, what's left in the sand are some of these ones that have mechanical damage or they got disease. So one like this, like where do you draw the line between? Well, this one's got a lesion here at the top. So when they oh, have any yeah. kind of lesions like this, yeah. that's mechanical damage. This one is geotropism, it was upside down. So if it grows upside down, it's abnormal. And that's dead. One dead one. Well, there's lots, but I just picked oh, one. Oh, okay. It... okay. So. That's sad. This one looks pretty sick. Yeah, just disease and mechanical damage. So anything that harms the seed from the field to gets to us. That's why it's very important to have the combine set right. Yes. Mm hmm So this is a contraption that was made up when we read all the sand. Oh, yeah. Here and it gets discarded out into a bin. It's a lot easier. Before we used to have Rubbermaid containers and every time you got full you'd have to go and move it into the back. So it saves a lot of time. Um, the, I don't know what else we would you like to see. Whatever. Oh, the C counter. Bridget will take you over to the C counter. It's just another test that can be done. Oh, okay. so we have a data count C uh, counter. We used to have the older type, the bowl style. That's what we have is yes. the bowl. This one is actually was built for the diamond industry, and then they um, made it for seeds. So everything, I weighed it out already, so it's 113.4. Uh, grams for seed count. Again, with everything being barcoded. And then, so we do two reps of 113.24. It'll go on a worksheet, and then it reports to the customer at in pounds and kgs. I always thought the seed company just picked a number. <laughs> they don't just pick a number? They don't just pick a number. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was sure that's how they did germs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 99. <laughs> Pulled it out of a hat. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And everything with the, now that we scanned it, it all gets transferred into our database. and Automatic. Yeah. So when we go to send the results, Lori can just upload it all and it, it's all in some of the, some of the data points. It wasn't like this before, was no. it? No, it was all <sighs> all handwritten. Yep, Rob's sister used to come after school and would count beans. <laughs> a lot so, of bean counting. So that one has 611, so we'd write that down and then we would do the next one. And they're only allowed to be 25 seeds out. So if it was out of tolerance, we would do a third one to ensure yep. it was within tolerance. That's kind of how we do it up there. We do two samples and average it and hope it's right. <laughs> and hope your samples, like that's why it's so important to get a good sample. Yes, yes. The number one thing is a representative sample. What, um, what the client sends to the lab and then we mix and divide it down, but it's most important to get a representative sample. <clears throat> and so what, what we have a, in the plant, and I, I showed it on uh, a previous video, is all automatic samplers. Yes. So there's no human that's going to go and grab it like it's all done 
with an automatic sampler with the bags i think it's every eighth bag it takes a sample then we put that in a big pail then we cut it and you cut it mm -hmm. it's like cutting the cards yes exactly do you do a purity on on anything the grade tables any crop that there's certain weights that are specified in the oh one thing we didn't cover is how do you do uh, the test for roundup to make sure the gene is in there. Okay, go ahead. It? So it's a grow out test for Roundup. And what we do is we have a uh, water Roundup solution. It's all as a, per a recipe. We plant those seeds on a Kimpak water a solution. Tray? Yeah, we I'll can go get a tray. Okay. Yeah, we'll go back and Germany and just show them. So we get an Okay. And neither they live or they die. for a Roundup test, and in it we put five check samples, which... Oh, five non-GMOs? Right, so then we know that the test worked. So see in there, and so in the seven days it doesn't kill it yet if it was to keep growing, but then they have um, they have signs like that, and they also have uh, shortened stubby roots <laughs> and a clawed, clawed leaves. There's a good one too. So your non-GMOs are uh, treated with red? Yes. Yep. So and then we when we know. have treated samples, they get there's the plain, the yeah, the, yeah. the untreated, and it's so always five. So yeah, we know that there's five check tests in each roundup. Same with we also do a decamba test, and it's the same idea. The decamba solution and water. Can't find another one for the clock. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it lately. Like when the, the roundups first come out, that was always the big worry. You know, how do we know that it's in there? You know. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's the test we do. Well, Erin, thanks for the tour. You're welcome. It's nice to know that uh, the seed companies don't just pick these numbers out of a hat or or yep. whatever. Lots and, of rules to follow. And uh, I just thought it's important to show people some of the backstory of what goes on in the seed business. It's more than just grabbing a bunch of beans and throwing them in a bag and charging eighty bucks and yep. calling it a good day. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, and uh, if you like this video, give us a subscribe and a like, and uh, we'll maybe catch you again later. Hashtag Bean Day!